the housing market truly looks ugly, especially if we compare it to 2020, 2019, maybe even 2020. And that's because the prices are just insane. The unaffordability level is at an all time low. If you're somebody that dreams about purchasing a home, you just left to think what is truly happening here? And are things going to get worse in 2024? Are the prices truly going to crash? In this video, we're gonna review what the current state of the national housing market is. And I'm gonna talk about some forecasts in order to help you make the right decisions for you. My intention is to give you more data so that you have more information to research. Now, first off, let's look at some data to determine how home prices have fluctuated on a national level. And for that, I'm gonna tap into the Case Shiller US National Home Price Index, which based on a lot of economists feedback is one of the most accurate ways to determine how prices have fluctuated over a period of time. And specifically, this index tracks the changes in the overall value of single family homes on a monthly basis. And I'm gonna to go to August, 2023. Those are the latest values. Value, 311 and we're going to want to compare this to same time last year to see if it's up or down or if it's basically holding right so same time last year was actually a little bit lower so the values of the home are actually up versus the peak last year now see this dip here a lot of the crash bros have been saying that the market is crashing the market is crashing because of this it happens every year, pretty much every year, prices will have a peak and then it'll drop. Usually prices are up in the beginning of the year into summer and then after summer, it slows down. Now this drop here was a little bit more exaggerated partially because at that point we were dealing with already increasing mortgage interest rates, but also leading up to the turn was a massive appreciation, of course the seasonal changes are going to look more drastic as well from a visual standpoint on this graph. And I'm gonna prove my point. So if we go back to January, 2022, it was at 282. So fast forward one year. So January of 2023, they were actually higher, 292. Now in line with seasonality, I wanna show you this graph here which is from the National Association of Realtors. It's the national median home price, but you clearly see the top, the bottom. So every year there's seasonal fluctuations. Some people on YouTube will say the prices are coming down. The prices are finally coming down. It's alluding to a crash. Well, no, not necessarily because the prices typically always will come down right after the summer. So remember this, that if you're gonna be purchasing a home, usually it's going to be more affordable to do that in the winter time. If the mortgage interest rate is at an all time high over the last 20 years for the 30 year fix, for example, over 8%, you have far less buyers who can now afford purchasing a home. Why are prices in the market still holding? A lot of you think that the prices should be coming crashing down right now, and it really comes down to one very simple economic rule, and that's the rule of supply and demand. As long as there's enough buyers for the houses that are on the market, the prices will hold. As a matter of fact, all you need is one buyer for one home and prices will likely hold or maybe they'll come down a little bit, but prices will not crash in that scenario. There's obviously buyers who can afford today's prices. What I'm gonna do next is visualize how supply and demand worked during three different time periods. And the time periods I'm using is pre-COVID. So let's just go with the year 2019, then COVID craze, which is 2021 and the beginning of 2022. And then fast forward to this year, 2023. What would it have visually looked like if for each home during these different time periods, there were X amount of people putting offers in? And so it, this is gonna be a made up number, but it really is just to help visualize how supply and demand kind of works. Pre-COVID, let's just assume there were four people. 2019 prices had just come up from 2018. Not by much, not by these crazy numbers that we're used to, but they were going up. Then COVID hits, COVID craze begins, 2021, beginning of 2022, and price appreciation was just massive. That's because there were so many people that were interested in each house that was on the market. I was in situations where we were dealing with 20, 30, 40, 
50 offers that were coming in on a home. And that's one of the reasons why prices increase so much. In order to win a home, buyers knew, or lots of buyers knew, that they had to go over the asking price. Then the next seller would utilize the last comps, right, where you've already had these massive price appreciations to price their home. And so it was kind of that vicious cycle that helped propel the prices forward so fast in a short period of time. And so during the COVID craze, if we were to visualize this, it would look something like this. Each line is a person and the board isn't long enough. Now this year, prices are holding on a local level, definitely tap into your real estate agent because some places may be below same time last year, Others may actually be above. In some places, it will hold. But we're talking about this on a national level. So 2023, let's just assume there's two people per home. To understand who's currently buying in 2023, it helps to go back during the COVID craze and placing buyers into different buyer pools, okay? So a big portion of the real estate homes that were being bought up were by institutional buyers. And a lot of them are now out of the game because A, they've already bought when the mortgage interest rates were really low. And if they were after appreciation, well, those high appreciation days are gone. So institutional buyers, most of them are out of the game. Then you had your first time home buyers. When the mortgage interest rates were really low, lots of them decided, you know what, now is a really good time to buy real estate. And they did. But now with affordability being at an all time low, First time home buyers can no longer afford purchasing a home. I'm generalizing here. Of course, there's gonna be some first time home buyers who can, but the majority are out of the game right now. And you got your baby boomers who on average around 60 to 70 years old. They've had all their lives to save up and a lot of them have reached an income level that's beyond what is currently needed in order to purchase an average type of home. And guess what? Many of them, are still purchasing. And so I would say right now in 2023, the majority of real estate purchasers are going to be baby boomers or people who are high salary earners. So what are the projections for 2024? First off, let's talk about the national sales levels and what the expectation is for 2024. And that's really how many transactions we can expect to happen next year. The national sales declined 17% in 2022 and is expected to decline by 18% in 2023. And so if we talk about a housing crash, it really is in the number of transactions that are happening right now, not in the prices. Per the Association of Realtors, when it comes to the transactions, it's anticipated to increase again next year. And the estimation right now is new sales up by 19%, existing home sales up by 13%. Now the consumer price index has come out pretty favorable in October. Yeah. And a lot of economists are now saying that when it comes to the mortgage interest rates, that we've now seen the peak. And many are expecting the mortgage interest rates for the 30 year fixed to be right around six to 7% in the spring of 2024 into the summer, okay? As we've seen, nobody really knows, but the consensus is that the mortgage interest rates will come down somewhat next year. In this chart here, I summarized all the major economists and their price predictions for 2024. We're gonna start from the top with Lawrence Yoon, who's the chief economist for the National Association of Realtors. He's essentially saying that home prices are going to go up next year, about three to 4% from September of 2023 up until the same time in 2024. Moving on, CoreLogic is saying plus 2.6%. Freddie Mac is saying plus 8%. Zillow, 4.9%, Fannie Mae, 2.8%, Goldman Sachs. And you can see in the chart all the different time periods that we're talking about these percentage rises, right? Goldman Sachs, 1.5%. Now all the price increases are marked in green and then in red, of course, are the declines. Moody Analytics is saying that between Q4 2023 to Q4 of 2024, prices are going to come down slightly by minus 3.5%. And then Morgan Stanley is saying that it could be up to 
percent. And so most economists are not predicting that prices are going to come down in 2024. But it's still really confusing, right? Because we're just making predictions. And at the end of the day, nobody has a crystal ball. And there's a lot of people who actually think that as soon as mortgage interest rates come back down again, it's going to open up opportunities for those buyers who are on the sidelines waiting for that to happen. And it's going to put additional pressure onto the real estate market. But yet there's a lot of people on the internet, on YouTube, who are predicting a price crash, given the fact that the affordability of purchasing a home and where salaries are, are at an all time low and that most people can't afford to purchase anymore. Well, yes, most people can, but there is still a group of people who can and they're purchasing right now. Now, given the current situation where sellers are in this lock in effect, it's evening out with the buyer pool. Prices are holding. And yes, if the mortgage interest rates come back down again, it'll increase buyers, it'll increase listings. The question is, you know, how will those kind of play around with each other when we look at the supply and demand side of things? Now, what do you do if you're somebody that's interested in purchasing a house? Well, first of all, nobody can tell you when the right time is because there's just, so much that goes into it beyond just the affordability of a home it has to do with your lifestyle and kind of where you're at in life. So you do what makes the most sense for you. It's less likely that the market is going to crash next year when it comes to prices. It'll probably continue to appreciate though. I expect the appreciation to be quite low. Maybe the prices will just hold. I think that probably will be kind of the worst case scenario. If you're somebody that wants to buy, but you have an affordability issue, maybe wait until the mortgage interest rates come back down again. That might open up some opportunities for you. If you're a cash buyer, it is absolutely true that typically prices will be much lower right around now up until the beginning of the year. And if you're somebody that's looking for new construction opportunities and you already have an idea of kind of where you want to purchase your home. Listen, I would urge you to do it now because builders are running great, great incentives. And typically towards the end of the year, they're going to be much more open to negotiating with buyers. And so if you're already going to buy, I would say do it now. Of course, you can wait until next year, but if you're a cash buyer, uh, if you wait until next year, it's more likely than not that prices are going to go back up again if at all because of seasonality. You guys, as always, thank you so much for tuning in today. If you enjoyed this video, if you like the data analysis, do me a favor, like this video. It does help out the video's performance. And if you're somebody that's in the market to purchase a sell in Florida, specifically in Sarasota County, Manatee County, I would love to be your real estate agent of choice if you call me and we decide to work together, you're gonna to be working directly with me. I appreciate you guys watching. I wish you a lot of success out there. Thank you.